Knowledge is very necessary in bringing understanding to the soul because when I have understanding then I can make change because it brings realization to me and change is much easier. But knowledge isn't always enough because sometimes or many times we all know what to do. We say, well, I've got to do this, I've got to break this habit. Maybe it's smoking, maybe it's a diet you want to go on. We know we should do this, we should eat this, we shouldn't do that, but the power isn't there. And so power actually comes from a state that we call soul consciousness, uh, understanding myself as that infinitesimal spiritual being with immense power, the propensity of peace, the propensity of wisdom and love and purity, these are the things that bring power back to the self. And so as I practice myself of being who I really am, then I become that very naturally. And then also we connect with the Supreme Force or what we call the Supreme Soul because we always get colored by the company we keep, don't we? I'm sure you all feel that, don't you? And so we have to keep the company of the highest soul that there is, and that's why we call that one supreme, supreme soul, highest power, highest being, or we say God, the father of the soul. And so just as I have a father of this body, there's a father of me, the soul. And all of us have that same father. Of course, all of us say we come from different religions, but if I ask each one of you individually, you would all say that there's only one God, wouldn't you? And so we just see God in a different light. We have a different perceptions of God, but we really truly all know that there is only one God. How do we know that? How do we know that? That's an interesting question, isn't it? Because within each soul is this imperishable, indelible experience of being with our Father, the Mother of the soul. That can never be erased. Even though we've had a lot of things going into the head, going into the mind, into the intellect, we've read so many things, We've been told so many things by our parents, by our educators, and so all of this stuff seems to cover up the reality, the, the truth of that relationship that we have with the Supreme. But deep within, there is still that seed, that eternal jewel of that relationship with our Supreme Father, the Supreme Soul. And so as we practice meditation with the self and connecting back with the Father of the soul, that relationship begins to grow. And as that relationship grows, and as I draw myself closer to God, then I grow and I become more at peace. As a matter of fact, just a few minutes ago, I said we all come from different religions, and that's true. But we really, truly, there's a deeper truth. There's a deeper layer to that. We really all come from the same religion. And what is that religion? Can the cameraman tell me? The religion of the soul is peace. Think about it. All religions are talking about peace. They're teaching peace. They're trying to teach peace. The wo world is at war trying to gain peace, and this is what we are. All we have to do is relax and become the reality of who we truly are, which is that peaceful being, the soul. And so Raja Yoga teaches us to do that, and this concept of soul consciousness allows me to look at you you might be a different culture, a different race, 
a different size, a different gender, but to see beyond that, whether you're wearing a blue dress, a green dress, blue jeans, or white, a white outfit, it doesn't matter. That's just the covering, just as the body is the covering. And so releasing the wings, releasing the wings of the soul, uh, means to drop all those roles and things of body consciousness, to allow myself to see everyone as this beautiful being of perfection, the soul. And what happens when I see you as that perfection, the soul, that beautiful being, that conscient being of light, then I become that more. And not only do I become that more, but as I see you as that, then you become that more. But if I look at you and I keep seeing your defects and your defects, actually that's what I'm drawing my attention to, but also your attention is being drawn to that, even if I don't say anything, even if I'm just thinking that. The power of our thoughts are so tremendous that the power of whatever I'm thinking is going over the atmosphere, going through the air, and reaching you, or whoever I'm thinking about that. And so it's very important to keep our thoughts at a very elevated state, not only releasing my wings, but being able to release the wings of others by just my vision, my vision of them. And so as my vision of them is, is uplifted, their wings just naturally begin to evolve and begin to release. It's just like a, a child. Maybe some of you have had grandchildren. Do any of you have grandchildren? No? So see, some of you are saying yes. Well, when the grandchildren come up to you, they act their very best. And the parents always say, they never act that way for me. Why is that? Because the grandparents have such a vision for the grandchildren that the grandchildren just live up to that vision, even if that vision is never spoken, because that vision is felt, because it's an attitude that permeates the atmosphere. It's an attitude that permeates each one of us. So my attitude towards you, or you, or you, permeates you and you begin to feel that and experience that and really that affects our relationship with each other that's why we get along with some so well and with some others that we don't and so releasing the wings is such a, a wonderful journey that each one of us can jump aboard it doesn't have to be that it's just me or just someone who's practicing meditation on a regular basis, but every human being has that possibility of beginning to release the wings, and the first step is just believing, just knowing, just thinking about it. Yes, I too can release my wings. And there are times I know when all of us have released our wings. There are times when we just have bright days and we're sparkling and we're glowing and we just feel like a movie star, glamorous. We've released our wings. But we're talking about not just feeling glorious and like a movie star, but internally reaching that place where we're always sparkling where we're always glowing, and we have released our wings, and we feel like we're soaring the heavens. And so, this is what Raja Yoga has done for me. This is what the Brahma Kumaris Raja Yoga has done for me.